That's me. Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. You all know that shit. Anyways, I'm very excited today. Um, we've got something cool. One of our very own, little Tay Compton, T.H. Compton, the, as you all know her, the mother of Con Solo. Anyways, uh, Lil Tay wrote a series that everyone loved. It's been a little while. It's been out. This is kind of back material at this point. Six months, a year, two years, I'm not really sure. I'm not good with math, calendars, or magnets. Anyways, <clears throat> this book is fantastic, and we are just starting this series. I'm going to flash the graphic up on the screen here for you. Beautifully Built. Built for You, Book One by T.H. Compton. Now, there is, in fact... Pain us. There is, in fact, a uh, a prequel to this as well, which we're going to be getting to eventually. But today, this is what we're working on. I'm going to read you the summary to it. <laughs> Can you find love when you don't believe anyone would want you? Logan. I can be cute sometimes. I mean, I'm a chubby introvert, but I flaunt it when I feel it. I just don't feel it that often. Should we do this in the character voice? Let's do these in the character voices. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back for a second here, all right? Just calm down. Edit it right here. I can be cute sometimes. I mean, I'm a chubby introvert, but I flaunt it when I feel it. I just don't feel it that often. I've had a few nights of fun, but I've never had a boyfriend. No one ever wanted that from me. Tonight, the hottest man I have ever seen just asked me out. And I actually laughed in his face. He doesn't seem to think it's funny, and he wants to take me to dinner, not just to bed. I have one question. Why? That's the first perspective. The second perspective, Cain. I just asked out the most charming man, and he giggled. I've watched him all night long, and he is such an oxymoron, adorably fierce, and Subtly, subtly spectacular. I don't know what it is about him that I'm drawn to, but I want him. I don't normally do relationships, but I'll give up all the numbers in my little black book to see him again. I just wish he would believe me. Beautifully Built is a contemporary M.M. romance with a plus-size twink struggling with self-acceptance and the gorgeous ginger bar owner who can finally make him see how beautiful he is. This book includes age gap, some nerdy love, and one monstrous kitten. Join the employees and patrons of Built Bar as they find love for themselves and each other. This is a ton of fun. And of course, we love Tay and Khan to death. To pieces, you might say. <clears throat> Anyways, enjoy yourselves. Have fun. I believe we did chapter five. Yeah, chapter five here. We got the mute cute going on and y'all are going to love this. Have fun. Peace. Five. Logan. I hated to admit it, but I was having a good time. Sill was right. I felt more relaxed and less self-conscious than I had been feeling. Devin broke through my musings when he interrupted the conversation. Don't turn around, Logan, but that bartender has been eye-fucking you since you went on the dance floor. I raised my eyebrows with a skeptical look, and he continued, I'm serious. You can't see him, but I can, and he wants a piece of you, babes. And that means you can go to the bar and get the next round, he said, winking at me. Oh, no, no, no. I am not going up there, I said as I glanced at the man staring in our direction. He was the sexiest man of life, and there was no way he was interested in me although he did look like he was watching me. I quickly turned my head. He must be looking at Sill. I mean, he literally shines tonight. Sill glowed, but then let me have it. No way that gorgeous ginger is totally about you right now, so suck it up, buttercup, and go order me my signature drink. Oh, come on, Sill, no fair. No one wants to order you pink squirrels. Can't you pick something simple? Or try one of the specials like Devin and Samuel, like your... <laughs> Order, you pink squirrels. Can't you pick something simple? 
Or try one of the specials, like Devin and Samuel. You like your... I paused as I scanned the table tent. Blush teenies? Yes. Thank you. And Samuel, you like your... I paused as I scanned the table tent. Dude, it's going to be more than that. And Samuel, you like your... I paused as I scanned the table tent. Your built blush teenies, right? I inwardly cringed as I felt unsure if I wanted to order those from the sexy barman either. Yep, real good, Samuel and Devin said in unison, nodding. I like my pink squirrel. It's creamy and sweet. What's not to love? Syl said suggestively. I rolled my eyes at him and looked to see that the bartender was still staring at me. I really didn't want to go, but I knew the guys wouldn't let it drop. This is going to be so embarrassing, I mumbled as the boys sent me on my way. I approached the edge of the bar and was relieved when the bartender's attention was focused elsewhere, taking someone else's order. I breathed deeply as the female bartender came my way. Just as she was about to ask what I want, the man practically shoved Stop. her out of the I'm what, about to I, ask uh, what I want. This is order. I breathed deeply as the female bartender came my way. This is order. I breathed deeply as the female bartender came my way. Just as she was about to ask me what I want, the man practically shoved her out of the way and told her he's got it, directing her to finish the shots he was pouring. She scowled at him, but did what he said, and now he was face to face with me. What can I get you, sweetheart? He said, and I swear I saw his eyes twinkle. I felt my face heat as I stared at his blinding smile. He's just flirting for a tip. Pull yourself together and get this whole situation over with so you can go drink in the corner with your back to him. Uh, sweetie, what can I get you? Sexy Mick Bartender said. Oh, hell, words. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I need a gin and tonic, two martini specials, and a pink squirrel. I said as quickly and nonchalantly as possible, so maybe he would just let the retro drinks slide on by like people order them all the time. He cocked his head. A what now? Did you just say a pink squirrel? I nodded, still trying to keep it cool, even though I was turning as pink as the drink was supposed to be. I don't think I've... I have... trying to keep it cool even though I was turning as pink as the drink was supposed to be. I don't think I have ever actually had anyone order that here. I think that's something my grandmother liked. I can make a more uh, modern day version, but that's kind of obsolete. That's fine, I muttered as he started making the drinks in front of me with flair. He even tossed a bottle behind his back and caught it. It was, well, pretty impressive. So do you share other interests of 50s housewives? The bartender said with a smirk as he made the pink squirrel. Ha, um, no, it is for my friend. The sparkly one, the one tall guy, or the one who is obviously watching us right now? He chuckled, and as he moved on to preparing my... I don't think the end should be there. One, the Correct. one tall guy or the one who is obviously watching us right now? He chuckled as he moved on to preparing my gin and tonic. Um, well, that would be the sparkly one. But Sill only orders it because he thinks it's silly, so he has deemed it his signature cocktail. It is an interesting name. Uh, yeah, but he just likes to make people order for them for her. I don't like the way I said it is an interesting name either, so I'm going to go back to there. Because he thinks it's silly, so he has deemed it his signature cocktail. It is an interesting name. Yeah, but he just likes to make people order them for him and make jokes about how creamy they are. And I stopped realizing what I just said to the absolute stranger, this extremely hot stranger, God, if I didn't already want to disappear, I definitely did now. A hole could have opened up in the floor, and I would have gladly jumped into it. I grimaced and looked up at him through my lashes, and I could tell he was holding in his laughter. Oh, your friend sounds like a funny guy. It's 
Not every day someone orders a drink to make cum innuendos. I was speechless. Did he really just say that? He's as brazen as Syl and Devon combined. He seemed confused when I didn't continue the conversation, so he went on. But this is probably too much for you to carry back yourself. I can uh, watch the pink squirrel and the gin and tonic if you want to drop off the martinis, or you can call your friend over to help. Oh, okay, that makes total sense now. I knew it was way too good to be true that this Auburn wolf would want anything to do with a fat nerd. I tried to avoid thinking of myself that way, but reality hit me hard. I just went straight to negative. He was interested in Syl, and he wanted me to introduce them. I guess I made a pretty good wingman, showing off Syl's joking nature. Sure, I said as I waved for him to come over. If you want to meet him, I can make him carry his own drink. I tried not to let the sadness creep into my face, but it was a real blow to the little confidence I had built up that day. I'd love to meet your friends, but can I get your name first? I'm Kane, co-owner and part-time bartender of All You See Before You. He gestured around the room and then focused back on me for my response. I was so confused. Is he flirting or just doing his job? Is he interested in me? Uh, well, I'm Logan, and I'm here to drink. I don't like the click, and I don't like the delete. I don't like that. Or just doing <clears throat> his job. Is he interested in me? Well, I'm Logan, and I'm here to drink. I joked, and he chuckled. Not here to meet someone, Kane asked. What a sexy name. Kane. 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 It just sounded hot and badass. It suited him in his tight black t-shirt over his cut, compact frame. It left very little to the imagination. I think I could see his six-pack indentations through the fabric. Not... This is still Kane. I think I could see his six-pack indentations so through the fabric. Logan. I think I could see his six-pack indentations through the fabric. Not particularly. I'm... I don't have... Sill walked up and saved me from spewing out nonsense about how I am single, for obvious reasons, digging myself into a self-deprecating hole. I knew when this night was over, I needed to take tomorrow to reset and work on my self-image, because it was clearly tanking today. Hey, Lo, you called, and I came... He just couldn't resist an opportunity to make a cum joke. I guess Kane was right. That made me giggle and got me out of my head. He continued, What's wrong? You and your strapping young man can't figure out my fancy drink? Hi, Sil, Kane said. I've probably got a decade on you, but I'll take the compliment. I made your pink squirrel, but I think Logan here needs a few extra hands to carry all these drinks to your table. Although he's hot and helpful, don't let him get away. I'll grab these and well, you keep yours and mm, we'll see when you do it. Oh, that would have been really good. It would have been perfect if I didn't fuck it up. I didn't fuck it up. I didn't fuck it up. It would have been perfect if I didn't fuck it up. Every time I fuck up that line. Although he's hot and helpful, don't let him get away. I'll grab these and you keep yours and we'll see you when we see you. He winked and wandered away. I couldn't believe Syl just dropped all that insanity and then left me here. I am so sorry. I can't even blame alcohol because that's just him. I'm just trying to take my drink and let you get back to work. Stop. I'm just going. Fine. I'll say it your way. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I can't even blame alcohol because that's just... No, that's not a good place to cut. Not right there, and I want that breath. I'm going to have to go back further. All that insanity and then left me here... I am so sorry.
all that insanity and then left me here. I am so sorry. I can't even blame alcohol, because that's just him. I I'm just going to take my drink and let you get back to work. I started to slink away, but he called out to me. Wait, if you come back to talk to me again later, the next round is on me. He winked at me and then went to another customer to get their order. In a daze, I went back to the table. Devin looked like he was about to burst out of his skin in excitement. I just sunk down in my seat and stared. <sighs> I don't get it. Devin frowned. Babes, Logan, you have to realize that lots of men will find you attractive. Sure, some men do, but never a man as freaking hot as that. Men like that have only ever ignored me or been cruel. I'm not interested in being someone's joke or verbal punching bag. I beat myself up enough as it is. I felt the negativity seep into my bones. But I looked at the bar and Kane was still stealing glances my way. Come on now, Logan. He talked with you for ten minutes while making four drinks. Do you see him doing that with anyone else? He is very into you. Devin said with an eyebrow, I brr, brr. <clears throat> anyone else? He is very into you. Devin said with an eyebrow, I, with an eyebrow waggle. <laughs> wee wees, the secret weapon. Anyone else? He is very into you. Devin said with an eyebrow waggle. The way you are talking isn't fair to yourself or him. Well, I felt sufficiently scolded. I knew he was right. If I was being objective, I could see that I had some attractive features. And I wasn't an ogre or anything. Not that ogres weren't cool. I just needed to dance and get some courage and go back and talk to him. Liquid courage would so, have to do. Get some courage to go back. And I wasn't an <clears throat> ogre or anything. Not that ogres weren't cool. I just needed to dance and get some courage to go back and talk to him. Liquid courage would have to do, so I slugged back my drink and told Syl they were playing our song. I was going in once. That wasn't such a good delivery for that. I slugged back my drink and told <clears throat> Syl they were playing our song. I was going in once it was done.